Welcome back. It's still the Mindset Monday edition of the program, and it's time for Off the Press. And I must tell you that Opunabo Unkotaria, a political affairs analyst, is standing by to join us to analyze the headlines. So first, let's move to the leadership newspaper. And the leadership newspaper leads with insecurity. Hope rises for northern businesses with new service chiefs. The writer there, there are three writers, insecurity hindering revival of region's economy, industrialists. How banditry stalled 30 billion Naira milk factories, Zungeru dams in Niger. IGP meets police squadron today. Details of that is on page four of the leadership newspaper. And you have the strip there on top, 10th National Assembly. Akbabio camp dismisses planned upset in the Senate. You can find details of that also in that newspaper. Labor fears job losses as discos raise electricity tariffs. That's on the masthead and above the masthead you have Zenith Banks Adam wins CFO of the year. And then you have Hajj, all 95,000 95, Nigerian pilgrims to be at Arafat tomorrow. Looking down, you have smaller headlines. Naira, import has grown as customs raises exchange rate to 589.45 to the dollar. And you have mob kills man accused of blasphemy in Sokoto. Page six of the leadership is where you find that horrible story of a man who was killed by the mob there. Let's move from the leadership to the nation newspaper. And the nation newspaper leads with why discos are bent on electricity tariffs increase. AEDC, fluctuation of Naira exchange makes upward review inevitable. Above the masthead, you have Envoy, population of Nigerian students in UK rose by 107,000 in three years. And at the bottom strip, you have Flood Sweep's newlywed man in Ondo. Gunmen abduct nine passengers. Where did that happen? Well, details of all of that you find inside of the Nation newspaper. From the Nation newspaper, we go to the National Economy. The National Economy leads with 21 billion dollars divestment in Nigeria's upstream oil sector. Dangerous signal. Stakeholders worry as multinationals capital expenditure in upstream sector drops by 74% in eight years. Say more investments production needed. That's the front page of the national economy the headline there dangerous signal it says and then going down at uh, the lower headlines you have how your fingerprint will change the authentication game what is that about you need to pick up the national economy uh, to find that out page 10 is where it is Navigating Nigeria's debt, a prudent approach to sustainable development. Page 12 is where you find details of that. And there is an article there, what you need to know about the new Forex regime. That's the much to be taken from the national economy. And we end it with Nature News. Nature News leads with why Lagos ranks fourth least livable city in Global Index. Page three is where you have details of that. We discussed that on the breakfast on Friday. Lagos ranked fourth 
fourth least livable city in global index. On the masthead, you have Nima hands over relief materials to families affected by Patigi boat mishap in Kwara State. Well, the nations finalized $100 billion climate aid at Paris Summit. Macron, page five, is where you find details of that. AFDB assures President Tinubu of support for agriculture and power. Nigeria maintains world's top five open defecation rate for 15 years. That is not a good report. Abuja flooding. Trademark estates residents lament government negligence of drainage channels. Page six is where you have details of that. And that's the much will be taken from the headlines of the nature news and time for me to unveil my guests this morning for of the press opunabo Nkotaria. good morning to you opunabo good morning Maureen. good morning nigerians well let's start with the headlines of you're looking good oh thank you opunabo <laughs> thank you you are looking good as always always with your yeah, niger you. delta cap <laughs> <laughs> Unmistakable. <laughs> so this burning issue, uh, which the nation is leading with, why discos are bent on electricity tariff increase. Let's start with that. <coughs> okay, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, I, it is still a very large and justifiable because the company, the discos, are in Nigeria. And we are all aware of the festering economy. And so you don't expect them if, for example, they were buying the diesel, just for example, hypothetically, for maybe 700 or their fuel for maybe 700, uh, 189, 198 naira per liter. And now it has uh, gone up to as much as uh, 520, 530 or whatever it is. You also expect then that that increase in price, because it's going to have a domino effect on everything. They have to fuel their cars. They have to, and don't forget, most of these people have lots of vehicles. They have over maintenance, overhead costs, and a whole lot of things, payment of workers and everything. So they will definitely increase the prices. So what are the, what is it called again? Uh, sorry. Tariff. What is this thing tariff. called? Yeah. Their tariffs, yes, yeah. tariff. They definitely increase their tariff in order to meet up to the demands of running the office, sustaining the company. So I don't blame them whatsoever. And if you can imagine the stratospheric increase in the mm -hmm. cost of fuel, a lot of people have packed their cars and so many because you we, we already live in a country where we have an, an economy that is exceedingly inflammatory, you know. So you, you don't blame anybody who agrees, like the market to win anybody. But my own worry is that when you increase your tariffs, let us have commensurate reward. Mm -hmm. There should be productivity. Let us have that light we are paying for. Because even now, we don't have, most times, especially for those using estimated and that are underestimated bill. Yeah. They suffer most. It's terrible with come. estimated billing. It's it, terrible. Yes. You are paying, in most cases, five times more than what you ought to pay. That is the truth about it. So I, if they can ensure permanent supply of power, if we can get, even if we get, let's say, 15 hours a day, I tell you Nigerians will be very happy, and the micro-industries will grow. But that is not the case. 
like in my house, that I was shocked when I saw lights this morning. Hmm. As we were on telly discussing, they are my repair houses. I, 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 I had to move from Mister to these smaller generators because you can't really afford it. Now, even with the smaller generators that we thought were going to be cheaper, we are talking of the 9 kVAs and so on. At least so that you can power your AC and some fridges. Even those ones now, Tinubu has made it impossible for us to use with the so-called removal of subsidy. In actual fact, in actual fact, the money you said you were using to subsidize, if you had maintained our refineries, if you had stopped paying workers, the um, I'm talking about NNPC now, the emoluments and all those things, we wouldn't have had a bite that came from the so-called fuel system. But because the last president, I'm talking of Muhammad Ugwal, mm. was part of that so-called cartel. If you are not part of the cartel, you would have named and shamed them. Because he was also the, not just the president, but the minister for petroleum. For mm -hmm. And for eight years, you did not name, you did not shame members of that so-called so -called cartel. So you are part of it. And you are paying for turnaround maintenance. In addition to the salaries and so on, you are paying. Is that not fraud? That is why you're Nigerians... A comatose, you're maintaining a comatose industry. Industry that is not working, you're maintaining. And you're paying people salaries for, to uh, uh, purportedly working in an industry that is not working. Yeah, that's is why that Nigerians... Fraud? Nigerians are eagerly waiting to see how President Tinubu is going to investigate that sector. Having suspended yes, the yes, CBN yes, governor... I pray he's not part of it. I pray he's not part of it. Because he was leader of the APC as at when the president. But his excuse will be, I can only advise from the outside. It is up to the president to accept or reject the advice. That is his only excuse. Now, if that is going to be his excuse, then let him prove. We are not saying somebody must be indicted. That's not what we are saying. But it should be an open and transparent proof so that Nigerians will know if actually there was fraud in that sector or not. And if there were, then the corporates must be brought to book. That is what it was. Not just under Buario, not just under Buario, under all administrations, not just under Buario. From when the refinery stopped working, the president's in office. From when they stopped working, I don't want to say it was be Buario. But for eight years, you could not address the subsidy issue by fixing a refinery that the so called that so, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry for me to say so called that Dan Gote built in how many years? Okay, while we're, talk, while that, we're talking that, we're using for turnaround. Yes, let, let, while we're on yes, that, exactly. let's, let's look at this headline just to post them. Let's look at this headline on national economy. $21 billion divestment in Nigeria's upstream oil sector. Dangerous signal. Uh, maybe I should take the, the riders again. No, 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 no. You, okay, okay. If you want to take the otherwise, yes. You okay, see, go ahead. The, 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 doing business in Nigeria is becoming complicated than that. Hmm. The issue of diversity, it didn't just start. I think, I think about some years back. Some years back, about three, four years, about five years. Was it on that Jonathan? I forgot. It. But it didn't just start. One has to be very honest. But you see, when you have a volatile forex, it becomes almost difficult for international businessmen to function because they have projections. They are not as Rudderless as Nigerians. If you go to the UK, you go to the US, there are projections. They, they, they might not be too sure of the exchange rate, so to speak, even though to a very large extent it is being controlled by them. But they might not be too sure. But there is a range. Worst case scenario is going to be this. I'm not an economist, mm. but it's just simple logic. Worst case scenario is going to be this. So let us take the worst and work with it. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Then if the environment becomes conducive, then it becomes a windfall. So at no point in that, but you can't do that in this part of the world. You can't do that. 
You can't do that. This is aside from the problems with the issue of uh, militancy, bandits, and so on. That is also part of the uh, uh, problem convoluting the whole thing. We agree. But even the government itself is also responsible because you don't have a policy. You run a government without policies. You just get up in the morning and decide. Okay, look at the uh, uh, removal of subsidy. They said by end of June, people have prepared their mind. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, May 29th, you got up and by fear, decree subsidy has been removed because the, it was not in the budget of this year. It was not in the budget of this year, but your predecessor managed it to the point of the budget. Well, right. there, was not, there was nothing on ground to palliate the asperities of the removal of that suit. So the a, a business environment becomes hostile to investment. And what do you want them, to, want them to do? Every businessman wants to make money. So when the environment is hostile, he leaves. He leaves. And mm. that is why you see a lot of them divest. He leaves. That's the truth about it. And now, taking us back to the very first hot topic, um, the very first headline we talked about, which is, uh, has to do with the, the tariff uh, in electricity, uh, the leadership also has something in that regard. The labor fears job losses as discos raise electricity tariffs. It is a holistic thing. First and foremost, to the consumers, the issue of scale of Preference comes in. Opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. Even in your establishment, if they have to pay for electricity, which is mandatory, which is compulsory, because without it, you can't function. But I believe that people are constantly on gen anyway, because it, it is difficult yeah. to have a broadcast station and depend on NEPA. You're definitely on gen. Definitely. Now, this. Now, you can imagine. With the increase, in, I'm trying to liken it now. With the increase in, of course, you're using Lister, uh, so it's uh, diesel. But hypothetically, once let us assume you people are using Lister, uh, de, um, what is it called? Petrol, PMS. Now, with that increase in price, there has to be opportunity cost. You're going to lay off some workers. Not because they are not good enough on the job. They, are, they probably are square pairs and square holes. But the issue is you have to pay them. Right now, they even pay salaries. It's a problem in most establishments. It's a problem. Most establishments are the, the people are being old. I know of a of a sister station. They will just give you their ID card and tell you, well, this is your food. Hmm. Don't bother me. And most times when they go out, they go out very popular. One, but I can't mention it. So they depend on what they get from outside. That is the truth. So in this particular instance, it's definitely going to have an effect on the establishment. Then they'll lay off the workers. They'll definitely lay off workers. Because they cannot afford it. So what do they do? You lay off workers. Those ones working there are automatically pushed into the labor market. Mm. Not only the uh, discos, it will, it, it will affect every other stratum of the economy, of the society. Every stratum of the society. You know, economic because reforms... We all, go to the, we all go to the same market. We yeah. all go to the same market. Yeah, economic reforms. Whatever. Economic reforms are sometimes inevitable, especially for a new administration. But what we are worried about is if it's not happening way too suddenly. I, I was discussing with a guest on, on Friday uh, this same issue of um, possible 40% increase in this, uh, you know, billings. And, and I was saying, because there is a talk of the subsidy being removed. You are talking about the tariffs now? You're exactly. The, tariffs. the tariff. Okay. The, 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 the subsidy being removed. So all this removal of tariffs, uh, subsidy back to back, back to back, one would have thought that as we carry out these reforms, we do it one after the other to give Nigerians enough time to absorb, to adjust. But it does appear that it's happening at such, uh, in such a way that Nigerians feel so, they are gasping for breath. They are gasping for breath. Oh, I like it. 
I like, I like, I like that expression. We are gasping. You see, I will tell you something more. You see, that's that, it has to do with leadership, the kind of leadership. You know, a lot of our leaders have what I refer to as intellectual anemia. They get up in the morning without giving a penetrating thought to the steps or actions they want to take, and the effect on Nigeria and, and Nigerian economy, on Nigerians and Nigeria. They just bring you to action. You know why? Because they are not directly affected. The president will not buy food. The buy is not right now. We feed him. Anything, even the shirt is going to buy from today, will be bought by the house, by the by Nigerians. Hmm. Everything. So he's not affected. He doesn't feel it. So callously, they callously they wake up in the morning and do, and all his officials and those surrounding him, because of what they get from him, and those who want to intercede themselves with him will support him. Meanwhile, in their bedroom. They are condemning him. They are condemning him. Now, the problem is lack of leadership. How can you get up? We talked of the subsidy. People were preparing for June 1st. You get up May 29th. You say subsidy removed. And they gave a very ridiculous excuse. You told anybody. But you would have asked your predecessor why he did not remove the subsidy. Why he handed over or transferred that body in trouble to you? And just one more. Mm -hmm. Now you look at the tariffs. You will not blame them, my dear. I will not be as honest as you can. Yeah, we, we are. We are. We are. Is, is that my only grounds is that the, even when we pay, we don't have the electricity. That we is don't it. get what we pay for. The services. That is my only grounds. The unreliability of the grid. The, the grid has yes. been a major issue. The greed? Are you transferring the blame to the greed? Yes, no, no. The human beings. The human beings. They are exploiting us. These characters are exploiting Nigerians. We pay heavily for electricity that we don't even get. So it has nothing to do with the greed. I don't believe in excuses more than in my life. It's not, um, it's not an excuse, but it's what we're I, told. Oftentimes you find that uh, the grid collapses. We generate to a certain level, is, and we hear that the grid has collapsed. Well, let's ask and, yourself a, a simple question. Why is it that it's only in Nigeria that you have the grid collapse? Exactly. You ask yourself that question. Why is it that it's only in Nigeria that the, are, the dams are doing this? That? The dams Why dry up. Why do you factor up? all these things? Why did you factor them? Okay, then... If, why should I pay for what I'm not what I'm not receiving? Is that not exploitation? So yes. if the grid collapses, then let me also reduce my tariff. Because you're not giving me electricity, you're not providing electricity within that period. So reduce my tariff. Why will it be constant? Well, now that the states can generate and distribute and you know, let's hope that let me see what my state let me see what my state government will do. Exactly. Uh, undoubtedly, yes, undoubtedly, the problem we had was distribution. I just hope those facilities are still there. Because for, as with this new act now, mm -hmm. we should have constant power supply in the rest of And indeed, we across the country. Because indeed, across well, the country. Well, I don't know what other I don't know what other states did, but I'm talking my own is that my as I went to thought delay was enough as a government. The pro only problem we had was the issue of distribution, because of the law inhibiting states from distributing. Now that has been so removed. I hope, yes, I hope that those facilities are still in place and maintained. All the left in 2007. I don't, you, see, you understand what I'm trying yes, to say? Yes, I, I know. Also, because, mm -hmm. yes, if they, are, if, they, if they are being maintained, or if they can be serviced, in less than three, six months maximum, we, whatever state should be distributing, and we should have constant power supply. That because Odile had done everything, and he left in 2007, you know. All right, so Lagos and ranks... Other states, my job is starting. Mm -hmm. That's why I say I'm not done, I don't know. Other states, my job is starting. Now, you know, it can take them some time, mm -hmm. maybe a year or thereabouts, with any governor that is serious. Yeah. But in River State, all we need to do is just a service. Probably they must have stolen everything in that's if they've not stolen everything there. Well, let's go to <laughs> wealthy nations finalize $100 billion climate aid at Paris Summit. They're talking about that, um, 
global finance impact summit that took place in Paris on last the, week. Global warming? No, the, the, the global warming. No, global finance impact summit that took place in Paris last week. In Paris last week, actually. Yeah, President Tinubu was in Paris for that uh, summit where they went to talk about how to reduce poverty and the adverse effect of climate change, uh, you know, on, 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 on the world and the financial system. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. I'll do, I'll do the climate change uh, uh, summit or whatever. The yes. Point. The one that our president went for. Yes. Okay, what's the question? What's the question? Yeah, the headline here from Nature News is talking about how the wealthy nations uh, finalized $100 billion climate aid to, at the Paris summit. And that's quoting Emmanuel yes. Macron of France. I know. Yes. But it's not new. It's, it's not the first time they've been summits. But the effect, the impact of the summit. We've had all kinds of summits. We've had all kinds of uh, conferences and everything. These things are put into practice in civilized climates. Hmm. Yeah, whenever we get such aids, it goes into private pockets. I ask you a simple question, which is going to be rhetorical. Anyway, I don't expect an answer. <laughs> yeah, so, how many times, how many times have we used foreign aid for the very purposes they were made? How many? It's good. You find out that in most cases, sorry, you find that in most cases. Hmm. If, because most times these aids are, are meant to assist the poor, almost all. You see that the IDPs, you see that the economy, the target is a poor. What happens? Our ministers, agencies will just take this money, come up with bogus figures like the school feeding program. Even when stu students were at home, the ministry and the minister were feeding students in their parents' houses that we could not see spirits. They fed spirits and so that we could not see. Students were in their houses. Schools were closed. They were feeding. No one came to my house. Let me say that. Nobody came to my house to feed anyone. No. They didn't go to your house. That I know, whether you agree or not, they didn't go to your house. Of course they didn't. And because I do not know anyone whose house they went to. But the thing is this, Opunabo. Opunabo, we're going to continue to hear yes. stories like this if something is not done to bring those who have given us these false stories to book. Thank you. That is where we are happy with what the, the uh, progression is going on in the MDAs. What in the book just did. Now, it shouldn't end at that. They should be investigated. And everybody found, it, found wanting to be brought to book. That is it. Because that is the only deterrent we can have. Like the issue of uh, uh, Bawa. But I'm, I'm waiting for Tinubu to do that with uh, INEC chairman. Mm -hmm. Because you don't cherry pick in the administration of justice. Definitely. If what is going on in the tribunal, it is obvious, obvious that the chairman was compromised. He has refused to even honor any summons. So let it cut across board. The tempest of justice must not go through. Let it cut across board. So back to the issue of the conflict. I'm not really excited. I am not. Because when the monies are released, at the end of the day, what these what uh, international organizations do, is that they budget for countries, especially the African countries, the poorer nations. But when these things are released, I can tell you now that the conference took place, it just finished uh, last week. Yeah, on Friday. I can tell you now that, that our, weather will get, our weather will get hotter. I can tell you that Nigerians will be poorer because those monies will be used to fed off people's pockets and not for the very purpose they have been set aside. I can tell you that. So those conferences don't mean anything to me. Tilibu attended because he's the president. So he just attended. I don't really, really, really believe that he really understands what they are saying. I don't think so. He just let me attend. The presidents are attending. And we have been invited. So let me attend. If you really understand what went on there, then implement it in your country. That is the only time I know and I'll agree that you understood what went on there. Not just go like Buari, travel around the world and came back with nothing. <laughs> what Buari did was, what Buari did was just, 
<laughs> Excuse me, what I did not enjoy as military head of state, I must enjoy it now. Even if a commissioner's daughter was getting married in Cameroon, well, hey, President Tinubu, hey, President hey, Tinubu hey, was hey, there. Hey, President Tinubu was there, and yeah, President Tinubu was there. Had he had uh, some uh, meetings with Nigerians uh, in Europe on the you know uh, on the sideline of yes. that um, event. Uh, had some yes. meetings with uh, yes. people. Uh, marketed Nigeria to would-be investors, uh, letting them know yes. uh, his policies and how sustainable those policies yes. are, and yes. how uh, yes. they should come and invest in Nigeria. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Please tell me one president that left this country to demarket the country. It's a ritual. They say actions speak louder than words. It's not by going to say, if I come to you now to tell you now that the forest is beautiful, you can live in that forest, so there's no problem. When you know that there are dangerous animals in that forest, you go. It's actions speak louder than words. But if you come and you see that the forest is well taken care of, is it's it, 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 an inviting environment. Nobody will tell you. Because you know that there are no snakes. Those in charge of all these animals would have taken care of them. No rodents, no this. Beautiful houses or tents or whatever I call them. Maybe, I'm talking of maybe going on holidays, going to camp or something. You, nobody will tell you. You just go in. Nobody will tell you. So you don't need to go and market Nigeria. These people you're talking to are in the world. They see what is going on in the country. They're on their own. It's America marketing America. Well, the way Nigeria has been demarketed over the years. Marketing Open up. Open up. The president, it's not the head of Dubai. I don't know what they are called. They are safe or whatever. You, I don't uh, in Dubai. Well, that they are is... Not. It is only what, what happens. There's people see and they go. Yes. But your marketing means there's a problem. We and have a peculiar situation. We have a peculiar situation in Nigeria, Punabo. Nigeria's image has been battered over the years. And yes, there is a need for... We've had... You, you've seen capital flight over the years. We've seen the brain drain. So there is need for someone to go out there and say to people okay, out I there, agree, I agree we are cleaning up our house. We are cleaning up our house. The atmosphere is changing. The environment is I, changing for investors. Come in and see what you can achieve. I the completely new situation agree with on you. Ground. Now, Maury, now, let me say this. Nigeria is a beautiful country. I am now in charge. The economy is going to improve. Everything. The man you are talking to us, I don't left Nigeria. But fuel for 18 naira per liter. Now, he asked, okay, Nigeria, the economy is improved. So how much is your PMS now? 550 mm -hmm. naira per liter. And what if you tell you should go and examine your head? <laughs> oh, he will even be scared. He will even be scared sitting with you because he, he, he might just sit his head or something. There's like something definitely wrong with you. He might, if, he, if for example, now you come and tell me, maybe I leave out, and you, you, you come to me to say, and you come to, when I left, it was 18 naira per liter. Now you tell me, how much is it now? 550 naira per liter. I will just tell you, sorry, let me use myself, and I will go because. I don't know if there's something wrong with your head. Open up. We have to keep hope alive. alive. We have to keep hope alive. Uh, we've been told that market forces will stabilize these prices and bring them down. And so we, we keep hope alive and, 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 and look still, forward to I seeing still, the light at the end of the that. tunnel. I'm not an economist. Mm. <laughs> like oh, thank you, Punabo. <laughs> thank you, Punabo. That's how much we'll be able to take this on the light. It could be a fire light that will burn you. <laughs> <laughs> it will be natural light. No. So it depends on the light. And no, we're, we're expecting a good light, light. A good light that will illuminate, uh, they illuminate okay. the country and make okay. Nigeria good for everyone. That's our hope. A better country. A it new depends, Nigeria. It depends, it, it depends on the touch bearer. Mm. It depends on the touch bearer. Well, so open up our own Kotaria. Thank you so much for your time. It's always good to have you on Monday join us. Pleasure, beautiful morning. It's a pleasure, beautiful morning. Enjoy. I didn't say beautiful morning, no. I said beautiful morning. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day, Punabo. <laughs> Okay, all right then. Well, that was Apunabo Unko Tara joining us from River State to analyze the headlines of the National Dailies this morning on The Breakfast. The Breakfast continues on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us. There is a realization that it cannot continue this way. We have what it takes to fix it. 
and the conversation is already begun yeah. on what do we realistically do to be able to get the Africa Union to take charge of the affairs of our continent. Let me give you a case, a yeah. case in point. We decided, for example, that we are going to assemble our, uh, our market using the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Market yes, uh, that's uh, good eco Ecosystem. Yeah. And the, the positive thing is that it was unbelievable at the rate at which we were able to achieve consensus and we were able to achieve ratification. And I want to tell you, it is among the things that happened in the shortest time possible. It tells you there is greater realization that unless we act in concert, unless we act together, we are unlikely to make any impact anywhere. How so uh, we, we have, at least on the market issue, we have put that together. There is a debate that is going to evolve. Like, for example, we have also decided that it will not going to be business as usual. We have these meetings, Africa, uh, US meeting, Africa, Europe, Africa, Turkey, Africa, India. Uh, now we are waiting for, there is another one, Africa, yeah. Russia. And Africa, Japan. And Africa, Japan. We have made the decision that it is not intelligent for 54 of us to go and uh, sit before one gentleman from another place and I mean, and, and sometimes we are, we are mistreated. Yeah. You know, we are loaded into buses like school kids, you know? And, and it's, not, it's not right. Well, you are it's summoned, not, you know? It's not, it's, not, so? it's, not, it's not right. So the decision that we have made as AU is that going forward, if there is going to be a discussion between Africa and any other country, we are going to be represented by the chair, the outgoing chair, the income, the bureau. Let us let chair us of the commission and, and the chair and and, uh, and and the chair of the RECs, and we have five RECs. That uh -huh. should be sufficient okay. for I mean a meeting of uh, maybe six seven, maybe six seven. Yeah. That should be able to represent Africa, and that is the position I am taking as the president of Kenya. For any other meeting that we are going to have with all these uh, requests that we have uh, a meeting between Africa and one other country. We respect the sovereignty of others. I yeah. think to ask for, to be for uh, reciprocation is not to ask for too much. No. And for us to agree that let us have this kind of uh, setup. The only, um, uh, because I had a conversation with President Kagame and he, he actually led that particular position. I have had a conversation with Prime Minister Abiy. He believes very strongly that that should be the position mm. of, of our continent. Because, as you have said, if we, didn't, if we don't respect ourselves, nobody is going to respect us. And, and we should be able to take that kind of decision. Yeah. And part of that uh, respecting ourselves is when we say African problems, African solutions, we, we must be serious about the solutions. It cannot be rhetoric. Yeah. It cannot be talk. It must be accompanied by what realistically and practically we are doing. And with our capacity, yeah. No, this is wonderful, but I, well, just one question. Why are you having this discussion in closed rooms? Why don't you bring civil society, all those people, in this discussion? Because we can also bit, put pressure on our leaders or whatever to behave in a better way. African people need to tell their presidents we care about Africa. That should be a priority. Unless we act really together, it doesn't work. And in the reform agenda of, of the African Union, if you, are, you and your colleagues are proceeding that way, there need to be really a serious discussion about the structures and how Africa is... And, and, one problem is African countries refuse to cede any sovereignty to the African Union. 